What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Denaric Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2, Geography Now, Slovakia, this time. New Year, new video. Best way to start off the New Year's. And, uh, oh yeah, Happy New Year's to everybody out there, to the entire Wolfpack. Uh, may this year be better than whatever that other year was. I don't, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. But um, regardless, uh, Geography Now, Slovakia. So, for those who don't know, I usually uh, do the episodes when he uploads you know, the flag slash fan Friday. And that's usually two days after he uh, uploads the official video. So for those who want to, you know, ask for the video, usually I'll do it whenever the, the flag slash fan Friday comes out. And, but, uh, <coughs> for, for the, for most of the day, uh, he wasn't uploading. I thought he wasn't even going to upload today. The, I thought it was, you know, maybe it's January the 1st. He wants to be with, I don't know, family, friends or something like that. So he wasn't even going to upload it. So I was going to call it a day and just uh, not do the re recording. But then he just finally uploaded when I, when it's nearing my bedtime. But regardless, I'll, I'll do the reaction video anyway. And also you might notice something different this time. Uh, I noticed a lot of reaction channels uh, do this thing that I'm doing right now. They usually have uh, the person reacting being uh, up there and whatever the video he's reacting to or she's reacting to down there so uh, hang on let me, maybe i can just make this a little larger and that's that's fine yeah that's fine so uh yeah we're i'm gonna be trying the videos out like this for from now on uh if you guys don't like it you just go ahead and tell me that you don't really like it. you want me to go back to the old ways it's fine i'll <coughs> i'll go back to the old ways now anyway slovakia i can just kind of sum up their history in a a minute or two. Okay, let's go. Starting now. So Slovakia uh, started w during the 5th and 6th century when the Slavic migration started happening westward towards Czechia and what's today Slovakia. The principality of Nitra uh, arose around the 8th centuries and uh, uh, annexing uh, Moravia to its west, it, it became known as Greater Moravia at the time. Uh, afterwards, the Hungarians came and uh, annexed what was then uh, around the year 1000, let's say. I guess around that year, I think so. Yeah, one, the year 1000. And it joined the Kingdom of Hungary. Uh, later on, it would be known as the Kingdom of Hungary. And uh, let's see, after that, the Mongols invaded, killed a lot of people there. <laughs> Those Mongols. <laughs> and after that, let's see, uh, again, part of... Hungarian Empire for a long time, then Austria-Hungary. Then after World War One, Austria-Hungary, you know, fell apart. And it then arose Czechoslovakia. And then came the communist years. You know, World War II happened and all that. Afterwards, it became a communist country, part of the Warsaw Pact. Uh, there was a bunch of coups or a bunch of rebellions that happened there that were brutally, you know, smashed by the Warsaw Pact. Uh, and then uh, 1989, the Velvet Revolution happened and Czechoslovakia finally, you know, uh, left the Warsaw Pact, became its own country. Communism was thrown out the picture, uh, though they were very liberal with their, their communism. Their communism was a bit more successful than other communisms out there. Uh, and in 1993, there happened the Velvet Divorce. I like, I like that name. Uh, where it's Czechoslovakia split pe peacefully. And let's not talk about what happened in Yugoslavia in those years, but Czechoslovakia, peaceful split, and now they're peaceful, prosperous countries. There you go. And there you go. The history uh, summed up, and that's the entire video. <laughs> well, now let's go into the geography. Okay, sorry for uh, talking for so long there, but uh, I couldn't resist. Anyway, video. Hey, everybody. We are back to geography now. Good to see you again. So this episode, Slovakia. You too, Paul. All right, for the 18th time on this channel, in the Slavic world, you have the Eastern Slavs. No. The big Slavs. <laughs> the Balkan Slavs. The best Slavs. Ignore what's happening there. The Central Slavs. Central? I thought they were the Western Slavs. Where do you get some? They're in Central Europe, but they're the Western Slavs because Slavs arose east of the Carpathian Mountains and they headed westward, so therefore Western Slavs, right? That should be Poland, Slovakia, and Czechia. Play with us, Poland. Okay, okay. And within Central Slavs, you have Slovakia, the youngest sibling, who's like, Hey, guys, guys. 
Hey, guys, I, I have an automotive industry. Go on, you like cars? What about mountains? You like skiing? Yeah, Slovakia. <laughs> it's like the Jan of Europe, if any of you guys know that reference. By the way, guys, this is Terry. He's I do not. He's in the Solomon Islands episode. He's just uh, here hey, for Terry. a moment, so yeah, say hi, Terry. Hi. Anyway, cue the new intro! Oh yeah, he uh, added these uh, new things. They're super cool. Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Slovakia, not Slovenia. That's the next episode. I'm just tired of being confused <gasps> no. with each other. They literally I didn't even know. have a monthly meetup I between knew, embassies course. to exchange mistakenly addressed mail. To make things even more confusing, they're both Slavic countries. Their flags are similar. They both had a history of dramatic communism years. And even their names and languages have the same Sloven. prefix of Slovak. Sloven. Nonetheless, Slovakia. Before we start, just want to introduce someone who will be helping me throughout this episode. One of Slovakia's top YouTubers, PP Peter. Hey guys, thanks for having me, Barbs. Huge fan of the show. I was born Professional and raised Slovak. in Slovakia. I lived there for 18 years, so I hope I can be of some help. Thanks, Peter Man. And he hua. Never heard Let's of this look guy. The globe, I don't know. Shall we? What Cue is he? New Lager? transitions. Oh, that looks cool, actually. Ah, <sighs> Slovakia. We just kind of slipped out of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I just talked about that. <laughs> visited Czechoslovakia. We kind of do that. We slip Very out long, places. boy. Yeah, you guys are kind of slippery. Also, if you look at the shape of the country, it kind of looks like an elephant head with a really fat trunk. In any case, here's the globe. First of all, Slovakia what? is no, it doesn't. located in the <laughs> Sorry, region Paul. of Central Europe, bordering five other countries. So central that some claim that the village of Kremnitske Bane is the geographic center of Europe. But like a ton of other countries claim that too. Yeah, I heard some uh, Bosnian claims the that Bosnia is somehow the central center of Europe. There was even like this convention going on called Bosnia, the heart of Europe. I don't know, but Bosnia is definitely not the center. Let's just be real. So good luck. Anyway, the country is divided into eight kraje or regions. It's supposed to be like Lithuania. After the principal city that lies in it, Nitra. each has a unique flag. From there, the capital city Bratislava, which has gone by many names in the past, lies in the far west in its own kraj. It is the only country capital on earth to have its general metropolitan area border two countries, Austria and Hungary. Bratislava mm -hmm. is not only the largest city, but also home to the largest and busiest airport, M. R. Stefanik Airport, and Košice. Now, before we get into Košice, uh, that's how I would pronounce it. He's, he said Košice. I say Košice. <laughs> but okay, he's not Slavic. So, uh, by the way, I can also re read all of, well, let's say most of Slovakian. I noticed they have some weird letters. Maybe I wouldn't be able to read that, but I can definitely, you know, read this. But Bratislava, regarding Bratislava, uh, <coughs> I just want to say an interesting point. Uh, Brat i Slava, when in uh, Slov... Slavic languages, there we go. Uh, in Slavic languages, Bratislava would literally mean brother and glory. Doesn't that sound cool? Brother and glory. You know, I'm just going to the city of Bratislava, brother and glory. Uh, I don't know. But usually, uh, the funny thing is, usually capitals are li more to the central areas of a, of a country. Uh, you know, usually where it's more protected from other countries and everything. But that's quite interesting that there's like right next to like, other countries, they just stuck their capital right there, but the second I, city, I digress. Of course, has a second busiest airport, Košice International. As a landlocked country, Slovakia's water transport is almost entirely exclusive to the various river systems mm. found in their country. The largest and busiest port I love the oh, yeah. being Bratislava port, located right on the Danube. However, keep in mind, this small plot of land on the other side of the river in Petržalka belongs to Slovakia and not Austria, careening south to the Hungarian border. From there, only two other international ports exist in Komarno and Šturovo, both on the border with Hungary. Slovakia has a very extensive state-owned rail network called the Jet SR, reaching nearly every major town and region. From there, the border is pretty simple, mostly lining up on natural boundaries like rivers or mountains with the occasional anomaly like Velke Slemence, a town inhabited mostly by Hungarians, split between Slovakia and Ukraine, making it a dual split minority mm -hmm. ethnic enclave. Fun fact, Slovakia has five tri-points with their neighbor. I do believe after World War II, it was either World War One, no, I think it was... World War One or World War Two, they were awarded some territories off of Hungary. Hungary used to inhabit like uh, these areas as well, but these were like annexed to Slovakia and uh, the the Ukraine. I think it was known as Zemplin, Zemplin, something like that. Yeah, it was uh, after World War Two that Hungary, being on the losing side, lost even more. I guess, especially World War One after the Treaty of Trianon. Oh, a nightmare for Hungarians. <laughs> 
You can find tri-point posts for every single one, even if the border is across the river. Whew, that was quite a bit. Wait, Peter, you're from Bratislava, right? Yeah, Bratislava is kind of a weird place, man. They have a UFO restaurant on their bridge and a UFO sculpture. I guess we like UFOs a lot. Oh, and see if you can find a sewer worker statue, a car cableway, and if you look <laughs> carefully, cable see how many hidden war bunkers you can find. The weirdness That's doesn't cool. stop in Bratislava. In other parts of Slovakia, you can find things like Age of shame in Levocha, where annoying people would be put if they're gossips too much. A hotel we that need looks that today. like this, <laughs> and they even have a train that goes through a football field for some reason. I was there for the <coughs> second episode the of smoke. my YouTube travel series from Slovakia that shows the most intriguing places of our little big country. Wow, that's like the worst place to put a train track. I know. Why would they do that? I don't know. Slovakia. Well, speaking of notable spots, what are some of the cool sights to see, Peter? Let's see. You have the Stara Bistrica astronomical clock, the Khmarovsky viaduct, Levocha Cathedral with the tallest wooden an altar in the world, painted village of Chichmani, and the Warhol Museum of Modern Art, the Klaštorisko ruins, Piešťany Spa, and the most notable sites would have to be one of the many, many historical wooden churches. Or the over 200 castles and 400 chateaus found in the country, which depending on your definition of a castle, makes Slovakia one of the countries with the highest number of castles per capita in the world. Czechia being number one, I think castles per capita than you do so i thought it was czechia yeah, that's right i call the country czechia i know sue me but i heard czechia was number one with castles or was it prague specifically like the city with the most castles i don't know we take that title okay thank you yeah, put it up there. Ah, uh, thank you, random Welsh correspondent Duncan. Follow him on Instagram at Curly Good Life. And he hua. Thank you, Peter. Now, Slovakia doesn't just have a bunch of notable buildings and monuments. They also have some sweet nature, which brings us to... Oh, that's so cool. there's kind of an ongoing joke in Slovakia. It kind of goes like this. On tonight's news, tragedy struck as local authorities discovered a mountain climber who was found dead near the top of Vinica Peak. Just say it. We already Just, know. Come on, man. Come Just, on. Identified as Mr. Jakub Novak from Prague. Yeah! That's a Czech, Czech dude. dude. No, I mean, come yeah, on. It's, it's, so, it's, it's terrible. It's mountain typical. Mountain. Yeah, they love their Czech brothers, but Czech isn't exactly known for being the most mountain-savvy country on Earth. Which I think that joke went over my head. <laughs> being over Sorry. Being mountainous, Slovakia sits on the northern part Something of about what is now the Sorry, larger no. chain of mountains known as the Carpathians that swing into a hook all the way to Romania. Mm -hmm. Within the Slovakia section, there are subsections of mini ranges like the Little Carpathians, the Slovak Central Mountains, the Ore Mountains, the Maple, the Little and Great Fatras, and the Low and High Tatras. The latter of which you can find the tallest. I peak. thought uh, the, the Tatras was the name of. I thought the Tatras was the name of like all of these mountains right here, like on the very very western point of the Carpathians. It was known as the Tatras, but. Many of the mighty rivers, such as not. the longest one, the Va River, at about 403 kilometers long. Of course, the Danube River is probably considered the most important as it passes through Pratislava and many other important towns along the Hungarian border. Along the Danube is one of only two major flat areas, the Danubian lowlands and hills. This is where the highest concentration of people live in the country and where about half of the agriculture is produced. From there, the only other main uninterrupted flat area would be the Eastern Slovak Flat by the tripoint with Hungary and Ukraine. Slovakia doesn't really have many large lakes or inland bodies of Water, the largest one probably being the Lake Orava Reservoir fed by the Orava River. In fact, the creation of this reservoir inundated several villages, including the famous Slanica, birthplace of this famous guy who standardized the Slovak language. So yeah, kind of sucks for his legacy. In any case, <laughs> finally with- But it's kind of funny how they uh, uh, inundated everything except for his house. Like they, they only saved his house because of historical purposes. Uh, they technically, you know, recognized his historical legacy and they, you know, saved his house. <laughs> in Slovakia, you can find over 6,000 known caves, like the longest one, the Cave of Liberty, one of the only few rare Argonite caves in the world. It is also a UNESCO heritage site. And to this day, caves are still being discovered and charted. They love their caves. So yeah, long story short, Minecraft Slovakia update is definitely caves. <laughs> a mountain country. Hiking is one of their favorite pastimes. And within these mountains, you can find over 1,300 mineral springs. In fact, Slovakia claims to have more public mineral springs per capita 
than any other country. And they have the second largest reserve Austria. of fresh drinking water in Europe after Austria. And hot springs, oh, okay. <laughs> they have them too. Most famous one being in Pieszczany, which was a favorite spot for Romans. Oh, and we have this unique meadow with thousands of ground squirrels where you can feed can... them and play with them. Yeah, a lot of strange Ah, oh, I in want Slovakia. one. Thank you, Peter. Looks like a little All right, hug. and now is usually a time when Noah comes in, but he's visiting family on the holidays. So how about this? For a Slavic country, why don't we have our favorite resident Slav? It's time for Ivan. Come on, hey, in. Ivan. Fill in for Just Noah. Right? <laughs> now, as you oh, he lost the beard. See, Slovakia is huge on nature, but within this nature, there's. <laughs> uh, did he actually like listen to me? Like uh, in my episode where I did Serbia, I mentioned like you know he has that whole beard thing going on, like a lot of Serbs have, and then. I don't know. He saw the episode, then got rid of it. Uh, sorry to say, I think a beard looks better on you, my opinion. There's a lot of resources and industry going on, too. Today, Slovakia is one of the only few places on Earth where opal can be mined. And prior to the 20th century, when Australia had an opal boom, Slovakia was the only place in the world where opal was mined. During the second half of the 20th century... I have, like, an opal ring of at home. Slovakia, Slovakia might be Slovakian. ...heavily industrialized as they were seen as less of a geographic military threat. Thanks to that move, about 30% of their overall GDP is in industry today. The largest and fastest provider being the automotive industry. Today, Slovakia is the largest car manufacturer per capita in the world. After mm -hmm. joining the EU in 2000... Uh, to be more specific, in uh, 2019, they produced, I believe, 1,100,000 cars. 1 .1 mil this small country produces 1.1 million cars a year. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. And that's like 50 or 60% of their entire industrial input, just cars, an industry run on cars. <sighs> the, 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 Germany is like, wow. That's my little dude. <laughs> and having an easier system of business, companies from Volkswagen, Jaguar, mm. Land Rover, and Kia have opened up manufacturing plants, which, of course, Slovakia was totally down for. I mean, who wouldn't be? In fact, their impressive emerging economic Come outlook on, was so Bosnia impressive plants. during the early 2000s, they were nicknamed the Tatra Tiger. Wow. And speaking of tigers, here's Gary Harlow to give you a little rundown on the animal situation going on in Slovakia. Oi, it's me. As a nature haven, Slovakia has a lot going on, especially especially in one of the nine national parks, most of which are located in the central mountainous parts of the country. Here, a plethora of diverse alpine and carnivorous forest region species can be found like the most common mammals, European bears, foxes, wildcats, and minks. Hunting is completely prohibited within the parks and some species are protected nationwide. There's over 300 bird species like loons, egrets, and storks flying around and probably dropping off babies, <laughs> as do 17 species of amphibians. The pool frog, the marsh frog, the edible frog, named all that way because it's commonly eaten. The edible frog I am not going to eat that. Like David Blaine with those frogs. Actually, yeah. <laughs> essentially laying cloned eggs of itself. It's super weird. So remember, Slovakia... Uh, now, for those thinking... Uh, for those thinking... Uh, animals that produce asexually... Uh, Usually, very few of the offspring survive uh, being produced asexually because then uh, genetic diseases can pass on a lot easier like that and like absolutely decimates uh, future populations. So this is why there's a sexual reproduction, which uh, uh, keeps species from being infected that easy by, you know, uh, genetic uh, uh, dis uh, disabilities, let's just say. Uh, something like that. I read in an article once, so that's why you have things that produce asexually, but barely any of the offsprings survive, and those that produce sexually, where a lot of the offsprings survive. So, also, uh, yeah, let's just end it there. I was going to say something else, but I don't think I will. <laughs> and that's all for me. Thanks, Gary. Well, speaking of edible, it's time we end off this segment as we always do. Food! Two words, potatoes and dairy. Okay. Specifically <laughs> sheep dairy. Solvax love these two things. I mean, they love it. They have everything from potato pancakes, both thick and thin, potato dumplings, and even their national dish is a bunch of potato lumps with sheep cheese and bacon. How does that make you feel, Yvonne, as a Serb? I definitely would eat it. Cousins, long lost. Ciao, brate. They even have this massive <laughs> fried cheese thing. Sauerkraut Scrum. and sausage soup, garlic soup, and of course, the national drink, Borovacha, and Tatra tea, which is a liquor 
are made from tea. Oh, and speaking of drinking, don't forget the kapurka. Is there coffee, you have alcohol? To drink the last <laughs> shot offered to you before you leave a house. It's considered I'll disrespectful drink it. <laughs> if you don't. In fact, uh, we Slovaks have a long history of drinking. Even some of our high-ranking politicians that were recorded drunk in public. Drink safely, sweater, kids. Who literally I mean, his car. those oh, yeah, who are old enough to drink. On Christmas, mm. but it's like uh, <laughs> terrible. It has too many bones and has a muddy flavor. People even end up in the hospital for swallowing bones, but we still do it. Yeah. This is why I don't eat Thanks, fish Peter. that much. No taken. And speaking of traditions and customs, we are ready to move on to the next segment. The... Demographics. Thank you, Yvonne. Peter, how would you describe what it means to be a Slovak? We are a very patriotic nation. It also means being kind of left out of everything and also being very passionate about everything you like but also about everything you hate that has to be said lastly being religious for most of the time <coughs> and loving strong alcohol <laughs> most I of like the time that. thanks peter oh uh yeah uh what's different between slovakia and uh, czechia especially is that Czechia is one of the most atheist nations objectively in the world they're like 70 percent atheists in that country Mostly stemming from their their past because sort of the Protestant Revolution or the the, the Thirty Years' War started around uh, Czechia. They they really had like bad beef always with the with the the religious world. Let's just say so. Czechia didn't really or Bohemia as it was known back then didn't really have a good time with the uh, religious people. And then there was communism that also rooted out some religious people as well. But Slovakia, on the other hand, remained very religious or seemingly religious as peter points out mostly religious <laughs> that's how i would define like uh bosniaks my nation of muslims mostly religious but oh they like to drink a lot <laughs> let's just say muslims yeah that drink a lot eh what can you do by the way this is a slovak axe one of you guys sent it to me for fan friday forgot who it was but thank you Okay. In any case, Three. here is the demographics graph. First of all, Slovakia has a population of about 5.5 million people and has a near net zero migration rate. The country is, of course, primarily made up of ethnic Slovaks at somewhere around 82%. The second largest group would be Hungarians living mostly along the southern part of the country at about 8.3%. I mean, at one point in history, much of Slovakia was actually called Upper Hungary. From there, you have the Romani or Roma estimated at about 2%. And the rest are groups mostly Slavic in origin like Czechs, Ukrainians, and Rusins, not Russians. Probably Probably a Bosnian in there as well. <laughs> as well as a few non-Europeans. They use the euro as their currency. They use the type C and E plug outlets and they drive on the right side of the road. The official language is, of course, Slovak, which, by the way, has the longest alphabet in Europe with 46... Take a good look at this. <laughs> it's kind of hurting my eyes to look at. Uh, like, I know what that is. Uh, that's a J, I think. That might be a N. Oh, God, what are these? <laughs> is this like French, like with the le and the Elysion? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so... Like, uh, at least they only have one ch, or is this another ch? Because we have this ch, and then we have a, like a lighter ch sound. So we have a ch and ch. Apparently, they just have a ch. Okay, that's like the weirdest part of our language, but... This is like a rrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
This is a tough one to explain. A Czech is the only Slavic language Slovaks can perfectly understand. We're used to Czech language in media, movies, etc. since Czerno So pivo. we kind of <laughs> learn it subconsciously. Czechs can understand Slovak perfectly too, but they are definitely worse at speaking Slovak as they're not used to Slovak things as much as we're used to Czech things. For example, a okay. blueberry is Chuchorietka in Slovak, but Borovka. Uh, yeah, in Bosnian, blueberry would be Borovnica, so s more similar to Czech. In Czech, one, one stork points to Czech. is Bocian in Slovak, but Chap in Czech, while Turtle uh, is Koritnačka in Slovak, but Želva uh, in... Turtle is Kornjača in Bosnian, so Kinda koritnach and not Czech. really, but completely different words. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> anyway, all right. So faith-wise, unlike their Czech brothers, most Slovaks do, to whatever degree of devotion, at least nominally identify with being part of a religion or church. About two thirds claim Catholicism, four percent Greek Byzantine Catholicism. Yeah, that's a thing. Protestants make up that's about ten percent, and the Rusin community is mostly Orthodox. Which, going off of that, I think might be a good opportunity to briefly talk about the Rusin people, or sometimes called Ruthenian or Carpatho-Ruthenians. Even though they only make up about 1% of the population, Slovakia has the highest population of Rusins out of They're any like other country. They're like a mini-nation. They are a stateless people group spread mostly across I, Poland, I should call Slovakia, them mini-slams. Language, architecture, traditions, and even flag. If you ever find yourself in Slovakia and have time, check out a Rusin village. It's a refreshing experience. Looks like Borat's we'll village. Like so cultured and <laughs> <laughs> What is my life becoming? Cool people in Slovakia. <laughs> and one thing all the people uh. love is sports. And with that, here's art with the sports part. Oh, nice to see you. It's been a really long time since we've shot geography now. <laughs> Slovakia. Okay, He's just so, so with this like, country, weird. there's one sport they <laughs> like absolutely it. go crazy for, ice hockey. Every Slovak you meet will at some point gloat about the 2002 World Championship that they won against Russia. It was a real huge deal for them. Of course, uh, okay. figure skating has always been Not a really favorite my sport, pastime but as well. well. These two guys won like a lot of awards, and I can't pronounce their names at all. Andrei Nepela, Josef Sabovchik. Andrej Nepala. Andrej's nipples. Andrej's nipples. <laughs> Andrej's nipples. Oh, After that, like most countries, <laughs> soccer or football is the second favorite football? sport. And every Slovak will tell you about the time that they beat Italy in 2010. Fun. Or, or that time Bosnia beat like Slovakia 2-1 and Bosnia went to the world championship. Was it a world championship? Yeah, but we did beat Slovakia once. As a matter of fact, hang on, maybe I can find the video here. Of us beating Slovakia. Look, oh, look at that goal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> They've received 36 medals in the Olympics up to the last one in 2016. Not including the times that they were competing under Czechoslovakia or the Austro... <laughs> <laughs> or the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It sucks that the Olympics were canceled in 2020. Am I right? And for some reason, the only event that they excel at the most is canoeing. Yeah, they have like eight gold medals in canoeing for some reason. Slovakia really rose my boat. Floats no, your boat. It floats my boat. <laughs> Thank you, Art. Yes, Slovakia. Ah, it's fine. Surprise. Rose your boat. Think you got them figured out. Easter comes around and they celebrate like this. Ow! Yeah, no joke. And with that, I guess it would probably be appropriate to Sorry, jump what? into the Random Hannah culture segment. Here's Random Hannah! What was that? <laughs> yeah, that tradition? It's supposed to symbolize a woman blossoming into beauty. Okay. Oh, and speaking of beauty... Oh, okay. Quickly, <laughs> yeah, that's my reaction. Yes, bud! I'm wearing a shirt with my own face on it, which you can also purchase at geographynow.com. Now into the episode. <laughs> anyway, as an industry powerhouse, it's no surprise that Slovaks have quite a few inventions under their belt. This guy had about 20 patents, including one of the first wireless telegraph machines. And this guy supposedly was the real inventor of the modern helicopter. During weddings and special events and... Well, Bosnia invented scented socks, so... Hmm? Hmm? That's something. Festivals, you <laughs> might spot the traditional folk costume for men and women known as Kroy. The styles Kroy. vary by region but usually mm -hmm. include white shirts and blouses with patterned multicolored aprons, vests, and head coverings. Slovaks have a deep history of folklore and storytelling. One of the most famous legendary heroes being Juraj Janšik. Did I say it right? Good enough. Uh, I believe it was spelled Juraj Jaroshnik. Was that correct? Juraj Janošik. Yeah, okay. Who was basically 
basically the Slovak version of Robin Hood. Today they have made one movie that received an Oscar in 1966 for the best Bosnia received film, an Oscar. The Shop on Main Street depicted a story in World War II. No Keep man's in land. Mind, this was when they were under Czechoslovakia, but the movie was made with a complete Slovak cast and filmed in Slovakia. And finally, we cannot forget the contributions to the visual arts. The most common pottery you will find is likely the Modra style of ceramic, usually white and blue with elaborate floral patterns. <laughs> Otherwise, since independence in 93, Slovakia has dabbled more and more into the modern contemporary movement. It's not uncommon to find galleries with pieces <laughs> depicting distorted Are those Yu-Gi-Oh cards? <laughs> done with aggressive brush strokes and a hint of surreal. And speaking of surreal, here's Keith with his music segment by my shirt. Okay, I thought it was going to yell. Oh, right, there it is. So you all know this around here. <laughs> Look at this. You can wear literally this face on your body. At geographynow.com. Let me make sure my hair looks good. So. I want Slovakia. that shirt you're wearing. First off, the old Keith. stuff. In Slovakia, bone pipes dating back to my phone going off. Oh, jeez. <laughs> want to make a meaningful connection? What? <laughs> is he on in Tinder Slovakia, or something? Slovakia, <laughs> bone pipes dating back to the early Bronze Age were discovered near the Nitra region and Celts were ruling the area. Yeah. Today during festivals, Slovakia style bagpipes and jaw harps are commonly played. However, one instrument every Slovak will proudly boast about, the Fujara. It's like a super tall wooden bassoon looking thing, very unique to the country and often considered a national symbol. From the 1800s, Slovak music came more Austro-Hungarian influenced. Composers like this dude became a prominent figure in the romantic genre during this time. Today, the music culture in Slovakia has evolved through many layers of influences from every period of their history and fuses them together. This lady, Marika Gambitova, has like more albums than any other Slovak artist. Today, they have some of the most renowned festivals in Europe, like Bratislava Music Festival uh, and Piske and uh, festivals, and one of the most well known in Poda festivals, Pohoda. <laughs> dating back to the 50s. <laughs> Finally, got to add some metal. Slovakia definitely holds their ground in the metal culture. Here are some really great bands I have found through my findings. List Chad. Right here. <laughs> uh, also, a big shout out to our fellow geography peep Andre from Romania. He sent me this shirt. Uh, I think his band's called Iena. Either way, go check them out. They're cool. Thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, let's quickly summarize the history of Slovakia. There's a lot of stuff. It goes back to the early Bronze and Iron Age. Lots of different peoples and tribes took over, like the Celts. Lots of invasions. Even the Huns got in on it. Then the Slavs oh, came uh, in. The Samos Empire. Great Moravia in the 9th oh, century. There it is. The Hungarian Kingdom years. Czechoslovakia established in 1918. World War II, they were kind of a Nazi puppet state. They're not too proud of it. That Slovak is well. uprising. Communism years. Velvet Revolution. They peacefully split off from Czechia yep. and they joined the EU. That's basically it. And now here's the part of the episode where we mention some of the top notable people from Slovakia. There's so many of them. I'm just going to kind of put on a photo montage so you can kind of just uh, maybe take a screenshot and hear some of them. And of course, um, he, 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 Peter did the spot on this section. Really let's to. be real. And with that, let's move on to the final segment, the Freundezone. <laughs> All right, Slovakia and friends. Now, when you're a country that's kind of been subjugated by multiple empires and people groups and been exposed to many different ethnicities, you kind of, you know, build up your repertoire and entourage over the years, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how Slovakia is. For one, Austria and Hungary are like the, hey, hey, oh, don't worry about those empire years you subjugated us under for centuries. We're cool. We're, I mean, we're still keeping our eyes on you, but uh, we're cool these days, but not for real. <laughs> Today, much of their business goes through these two countries and they get along just fine. Now for Albania and Romania, they were the only two war Warsaw Pact members that did not participate in the 1968 invasion of Czechoslovakia, which the incident even led Albania to withdrawing from the pact. So there's always that kind of a uh, thank you for not being a douche towards us attitude when it comes to Albania and Romania. Interestingly enough, Little Liechtenstein had a long-standing dispute over some land that they claim belongs to them in Slovakia. This dispute lasted until 2009 when they finally arranged diplomatic relations. However, some people might still bring up the dispute. Ukraine, Croatia, Serbia, and Poland are the Slav cousins they like to see from time to time and share hearty conversations with. Many Slovaks like to visit Bosnia? Croatia for vacation. And likewise, many people from all of the other countries like to visit the Slovak mountains. For Ukraine, Slovakia is like their gateway to the EU. And many come over not just to visit, but study in their universities. Finland kind of sees Slovakia as a good luck charm as they won the Ice Hockey World Championship twice when it was hosted in Slovakia in 2019 and 2011. India, South Korea, Japan, Armenia, Mexico, and the USA are some of the countries outside of Europe that have all had high profile visits either by heads of state or foreign ministers 
ministers, and each country has expressed interest in expanding relationships. When it comes to their best friends, however, it's not even a best friend. It's almost a conjoined twin, Czechia, or the Czech Republic. These two are as close Expected. as two countries can possibly be. They basically speak the same language, they have shared almost oh, every moment of history together, and they just... <coughs> it's kind of funny how they use the word... Ahoy, which is, uh, you know, a term pirates would use for, for, or something, but uh, they're both landlocked countries. So uh, also uh, kudos to them to, for staying friends uh, even after their split. The opposite can be said for the Balkan states, uh, especially former Yugoslav states. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're trying to mend ties. Uh, I don't know if they'll ever be as good as Czech. Czechia and Slovakia, but hey, we're, we're trying. Get each other the best. The only difference is that Czechia tends to be more liberal, Slovakia more conservative, Czechia less religious, Slovakia more religious, Czechia drinks more beer, Slovakia drinks more spirits, but otherwise, they are practically... I drink more wine beer. than anything. In conclusion, <laughs> Peter, I think you should take this one. What would you say? Slovakia is like Czechia's little sibling everyone keeps forgetting about or mistaking it for its twin Slovenia. It may not be big in size, I, I don't, but it's at least. in a natural way wonders, quirky places slash traditions, and very passionate and generous people. Perhaps the most common connotation with Slovaks I've heard from foreigners is that we're crazy, but in a good way. So remember, crazy- Also, he has the same background I got. I just noticed that. <laughs> crazy, but in a good way. Crazy, awesome. but in a good way. Yeah, just like Balkan people. Check his YouTube channel out. Stay tuned, Slovenia, the- Oh yeah. Not Slovakia country is coming up next. Slovenia, that that should be a good one. Now, uh, what else do I have to say before we get into this? Uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> before, uh, <coughs> sorry, there's something in my throat. Uh, the, be the easiest way to tell the difference between the Slovenian and Slovakian flag is obviously just take a look at the uh, emblem. If you see a double cross, 100% Slovak. Slovakia, Slovakia, and their Slovenia. I, I don't see how it's that hard to mix those two, two up, but some people mix it up apparently. Uh, but yeah, Slovakia, Slovenia, and Slovenia has those mountains, a little blue emblem on their flag. And so don't mix those up. Come on, really. It's not that difficult. But uh, what else do we have to say? Uh, all right, let's just get into the episode. I'll think of other things as Everybody, we go. Welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Friday. Hope you like the Slovakia episode. Thank you so much, Big good. Peter, for being in the episode and co-hosting. Check out his channel. He's got some great stuff. His humor is very... Uh, Big PP. <laughs> back. Let me just put it that way. So, All right, so this is the part where I talk about some of the small mistakes or the things that didn't quite make it into the episode. First of all, I'm so sorry. In the friend zone, there was a little glitch in the imagery. The Odessa region of Ukraine was missing. I'll make sure the animations don't have that again next time ukraine is mentioned oh yeah, so, didn't quite make it into the episode. yeah it's fine i wish we really could have talked a little bit more about the celtic rule over what is now slovakia it's really interesting they even have a monument shaped like a celtic coin slovakia has the world there record are celts for in the bosnia most prolific even. female murderer on earth countess elizabeth bathory yay there are some crazy stories behind that woman i'm not even gonna get into them but yeah slovakia in the sports part football tennis was invented in slovakia it's basically tennis with your feet Day. what else would it be that looks painful <laughs> time of Slovaks, much like their Czech brothers, would be mushroom picking. Sometimes they just go out and pick mushrooms. They love it. It's a family thing. And there's some Are other sure stuff, they're but guys, not honestly, poisonous? if you're Slovak and you wanted to know something that I didn't mention, please put it in the comments. Otherwise, we got to move on to the flag. So without further ado. <laughs> By the way, you can get a Geography Now shirt at geographynow.com. I love how Slovakia is like the world's biggest I don't give a f country on earth. Like they will literally interrupt a soccer game with a train. You guys just love doing what you do. I gotta respect you for that. So anyway, let's go on to the flag. Now this one's gonna be easy because the flag is pretty simple and it has the coat of arms on it. So we don't have to do a coat of arms segment in this episode. The flag of Slovakia <laughs> is a tricolor of three bands, white, blue, and red. Essentially the same Slavic as colors. the Russian flag in configuration. And of course the color symbolize pan-slavivism as you can find them and many other slavic country flags within the left side 
side of the flag you find the coat of arms, a red shield with a double cross and three hills at the bottom. The three hills at the bottom are sometimes identified as being the Tatra, Fatra, and Matra ranges of mountains that can be found in Slovakia. And the double barred cross was used as early as the 9th century in the Byzantine Empire. Now the double cross has a few ambiguous interpretations behind it and none are completely standardized, but some of the more common explanations include that they stand for St. Cyril and St. Methodius, the two missionaries from the Byzantine Empire that spread Christianity to the area of Slovakia, and some say that the first bar represents the death of Jesus, and the second one standing for the resurrection of Jesus. And keep in mind, Slovakia, or at least parts of what are now Slovakia, have historically had their own flags. It goes all the way back to the Principality of Nitra. There were lots of revolutionary flags they used when they were trying to, you know, deal with outside forces. For the longest time under Czechoslovakia, they pretty much just used the Czech flag. And after the Velvet Revolution and independence, they used this one. So that is just about it. The flag of Slovakia and the coat of arms. Great stuff. Now time to move on to the remaining 80-ish percent of this video. Geography. And uh, that's where we're ending the video. I don't ever usually uh, check these out, the fan mails. You can check them out yourself in <clears throat> your own time. But uh, so yeah, that would be Slovakia. So, oh. Perfect. Just enough time for me to edit it, put it up, and uh, go to bed afterwards. So, yeah, you uploaded just on time. That was perfect. So, uh, I have nothing else to say, really. Uh, thanks for David Sternads for being my patron, as always. And I'll thank you guys. I'll, I'll see you guys in the next episode. So, uh, until then, take care.